No windows. I don't get it, but that's that's what they do. I'm sitting out there with um, uh, Charlie Ely and Megan. They're talking about Megan trying to move out. And Charlie starts complaining that she doesn't know how she's going to pay the rent and she doesn't know what she's going to do. And she starts asking me, well, Mike, where are you living? You know, I was not really anywhere, you know. I'm just you know, bouncing around from place to place, you know. I just live everywhere but nowhere, you know. Not homeless, I just, you know, never find me anywhere for too long. Well, she asked me if I wanted to move in and try to help paying rent. And she asked me all I had to do was pay half of it. it really wasn't much. You know, she told me I could tattoo here at the house. And I don't got to go place. I can have people come here. You know, I can hang out there and do whatever I want to do there. That was pretty good. Well, I'm not going to sleep on the couch. So I told her, you know, when, when Megan and, and Jeremy Randall, when they move out to go where, wherever, the, wherever they were moving to, I told them I'd move in. Well... That was, that was still like about two weeks away. Uh, back to, we ended up going back to Amber and Kyle's house, their, their parents' house, uh, which is only about a block away. We're over there hanging out, and you know, me and Amber used to be pretty close, just not so much close anymore, but we, we used to be, you know, fairly close before I went off into my own thing for that, like six months. She pulls me aside. We're in a room on the computer listening to music. And she asked me, oh, Mike, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, what's up? She said, Objection hearsay. Mm, sustained. You can't say specifically what she told you, but you can tell what you did in regards to what she told you. Oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Oh, I, well, I told her she had to go talk to her mom, I guess. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to get around that, but I'll try. Do the best you can. Well, told her to go talk to her mom. She went and talked to her mom. Her mom started freaking out, you know, because something happened. And Amber went off to go handle the situation. She, she went to go break up with Seth. Um, I come out, you know, I'm sitting there with, I'm sitting there with her mom after, you know, she talked to her mom. I'm sitting there and her mom's going off. Her, her mom's going off talking about, you know, I can't believe. Objection hearsay. I'm going to afford some leeway. I, Go ahead. She, she's, her mom was going off about, she can't believe her daughter put up with that. I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to go into what she, Amber said, I won't go into it, but. I can't, she's saying she can't believe that her daughter put up with that and she's, she's just going off and she's pissed, you know, and Kyle comes in the room and is asking what's going on and Amber's mom tells Kyle what happened. Kyle goes off the deep end, you know, that's his sister, you know, him and his sister fight like hell, but they, you know, that's his sister and damn anybody else does anything to her. Well, he's going off and I just, you know, I'm getting kind of aggravated, I just wanted to leave. You know, walk outside, smoke a cigarette or something. I remember I walked out. I walk out. Amber's sitting on the steps right there outside the front door. And she's got the phone like this, and it's on speakerphone. And I walk out. And when I walk out and I hear it, it's just, I don't know how to describe it. There's, there's yelling back and forth. And, and I hear my name come up. You know, fuck my, excuse my language, you know. Sorry, it's just. But he F Mike, and you know, when I see him, let him know, you know, I'm, I'm coming after him. And, and I, I walked out into this, and I'm, you know, what, what, what the hell? What are you talking about? You know, but I don't say nothing because I'm just, I'm sitting here listening. And what I ended up hearing was he thought that she was cheating on me because I'm always there, and, and, and that's why she was leaving him. Well, he's sitting there, he's going off. You know he's going off, and I'm staying quiet. You know I'm I'm not I'm not one to to stick my nose in business that's not mine. You know, but he's he's going off. He's just going off. Well, they end up hanging up, and you know I just I chalked up. You know he's he's got his heart stomped on. You know I I mean you know, I've been there before. You know 15. I know how it feels. You know I I really do, and it just you know I, I chalked up as that. You know he, he just he just you know he's hurt. So I'm just, you know, I fear in about a week or so he'll he'll move on from that, and, you know, he'll just the drama will die down like it always does, you know, with kid drama, it always dies down. 
<clears throat> well, obviously it didn't, but about a couple days go by. He comes by to pick up his stuff. You know, there's there's words, you know, not with me, but between he and him and Amber, I'm just, you know, I'm sitting back. I'm actually inside the house because I'm not going to go out there and, you know, further the problem. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him. And he's just, you know, he's, he's cussing her out. And I'm just, you know, Kyle, he, he goes off on the deep end. He goes out there trying to start stuff. And it, it just, it, it ends up bad. He ends up, you know, his mom ends up driving off with him, hanging halfway out the window, you know, cussing out Kyle and Amber. And it's just, it, it was ridiculous. <sighs> Things died down for a little bit. There was a lot of text messages back and forth, you know, and Amber would sit there and take the phone, like, you see what he's saying? And I'd tell her, you know, I, you know why are you, you know, why are you entertaining it? You know, if, if you want it to stop, you stop texting him. You, know, you, you more, you know, you give him a concert, he's going to play the crowd, you know? Just, you know, stop. Well, they, they kept going back and forth and whatever. Well, and we were hanging out at all. Uh, I think we were, yeah, we were hanging out at the tiki bar to left the house again. It's only a few more days later. We're sitting out there drinking a beer, you know. I remember because I'm sitting out there, I was drinking a beer, and, and Amber gets a text from Seth or a phone call or something. He's talking about, you know, we'll be there in 30 minutes. You better be outside, you know, telling Amber to tell me. Well, I'm sitting out there, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't want no problems. I really don't, you know, I'm not, I'm very, I don't know how to put it, I avoid problems as much as possible. I really do. I'm not, I just, I don't, pick down my whole life, you know, I, 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 I try, I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little guy. I avoid problems as much as I can. Well, hour goes by, same thing back and forth, blah, 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 be there in 30 minutes. It just goes back and forth. This goes on for like two, three hours. Finally, here comes like eight, nine, ten people, you know, teens, you know, between the age of like, I don't know, 15, 19, coming down the street. There's like ten of them. They're coming down the street, and I'm sitting at the tiki bar, me, Amber, and Kyle, and, and he's he's going off, you know, why don't you come outside? You know, he's talking trash. I'm not going to say exactly what he said, but he, you know, he's talking trash. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with it. I'm, I look at him and I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You know, what, what's the point? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? I mean, he's just, he's showing out for his friends. But, you know, he, I just, you know, let him talk trash and you know, he'll, he'll leave. And I told him, you know, you don't talk trash, that's fine. Just do it while you're leaving. Only well, just, it just keeps going on and. Amber's dad ends up going out there, and there's there's words back and forth. Kyle goes back out there and gets in his face, and, you know, it pushing, shoving, going on. And I go out there to, you know, I go out there to try to, you know, stop some of this, you know, try to explain to him, like, I'm not dating Amber, you know, you need to chill. You know, I'm not, I don't know what your problem is. Well, <clears throat> I start walking out there, Tracy Wright, Amber and Kyle's mom, she calls my dad, you know, thinking I'm going out there to fight or something. Well, here comes my dad pulling in a minivan coming down this dirt road full of potholes, you know, doing like 40. You know, he, he, he doesn't know what's going on. Just he gets ranting, phone call from Tracy. He gets out, you know, he's worried about, you know, what's going on. You know, I'm trying to tell everybody, you know, everybody just needs to chill, you know. No, no one's fighting, you know. I'm trying to stop this. <clears throat> Somebody, you know, right about now, half the neighborhood's out there. You know, we got like eight, nine, ten kids over here. On this side of me, there's, you know, there's half the freaking neighborhood, you know. And it's just, well, somebody calls Seth's parents. They show up. I even went over there, and I shook his dad's hand. I said, look, I'm the one your son has a problem with. You know, I, I don't know what his, I don't, I don't know why he has his problem with me. But, you know, it just, it, it's ridiculous. My dad was there by that time, and we were sitting there. My dad told him, you know, I don't need to be having to come down here because your son's starting stuff with my son. You know, I don't want to get a phone call when my son kicks your, your son's ass, you know. And I don't remember who it was. I want to say it was his dad that literally said this. He said, well, maybe he needs his ass kicked. That's hearsay, Your Honor. I'm affording some leeway. Well, he said maybe he needs his ass kicked. 
and and you know at this point you know it, it's it's gotten kind it's gotten kind of old you know either it's going to be you know it's going either going to come to a head or it's just going to keep going on and at that point I'm not going to lie I mean I'm I'm all for it. you know if if it'll if it'll appease him and he'll stop you know well when they realized that you know it, it was going to it was going to come down to it end up being a fight I want to say it was I want to say it was his mom or his dad one of them said one of them said, "Well, just so you know, if he, if you, if you get into a fight with him and he loses, he's been known to call the cops." I don't get along with cops. I never have. You know, there, there's there's a long history of, of you know, <clears throat> from family stuff. You know, I call the cops. You know, because I got a black guy and then I get arrested. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't trust cops. I just, I don't. You know, and, and somebody brought the word about cops. I'm just, you know, that that turned me off from that whole thing. You know, I just, I want to know, I want no part of that. Well, neighbors got out. This guy named, I want to say Gary, short redneck dude. He comes out and he tells his kid, you know, you need to leave. He gets pushing him down the road, you know, you need to leave. And finally, he ends up leaving. Somebody called the cops. I think it was Officer Resnick was the one that showed up. And he even said, because we told him what happened, and he said, he said, well, from what you guys are telling me, that if this happens again, Go ahead and kick his ass. He told me that. He said he said that. He said I'm gonna chalk it up because he got what was coming to him. That's what he that's what he told me. Well then my dad brought up my dad brought up that his family was talking about he calling the cops. So well well you know if, if the cops do get called something has to be done. And he's talking about because he is 15 and I was 18 at the time I could get in you know trouble for child abuse. You know, this kid's like this kid's like five eleven, one hundred eighty five pounds. I'm five four, weighing one hundred twenty five pounds. And trying to get me for child abuse. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna go to jail for that. You're crazy. You know, I'm just gonna let it, you know I'm gonna let it ride. I'm not I don't want I don't want no part of that. And my you know my dad even my dad even he wanted me to have no part you know, no part of that. The officer said if another incident happens, something else happens. Call me, I'll come back out. Cause I guess he was a friend of the family, for Amber and Charlie, for Amber and Kyle. My bad. Well, a few more days go by, and uh, me, Amber, and Kyle were at my house. In fact, there's woods across from my house, and my grandparents are my grandparents are you know they're they're elderly people. You know they're from the age where you know pot's really bad. You know. Well, we were across the street, you know, in the woods smoking, smoking joint, you know. We can't do that for my grandparents; they'd freak. But we go, we're coming back, and here comes Seth riding by on a bike. Riding by on a bike by himself, giving me a dirty look. I got you, I got you. I'm just. He rides by. He goes by. We go back up in my garage, and we get a, you know, Amber starts getting text messages, or phone calls. One of the two, about half an hour later, talking about. Oh, oh! Why don't you tell him to come outside? He starts talking trash. I'm look outside. I don't see nobody. Well, I look up the road, and there's I look up the road, and he's up on the road with, I'm um, with him and like four other people on bikes. You know, he was by himself. Now he's got four people, so now he's back. Well, he's up there, and he's just he's 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 going off. You know. I go out there, you know, just because I'm, I'm tired of it. You know, my grandma tells me to come back in, and, and that was, you know, somebody called the cops, which, you know, Officer Resnick was the one who came out. And Officer Resnick came out and said, you know, what he actually, what Seth ended up doing, when he ended up pulling down his pants and moving to my grandma, my grandma came out to tell him to leave. Like, my grandma's, like, in her 60s. You know, that, that's, I, I couldn't believe that when that happened. But Officer got called. Also, Resnick came out and responded to this. He came out and said, "Well, because we can't find him, we don't know where he's at. We can't do nothing about it." So, well, we asked him to get, at least get a temporary restraining order put it on him. You know, keep him away from me, keep him away from my family. Don't want no problems with this dude. I don't want no problems with anybody. Can you please just put a temporary restraining order on him? Because they won't, they won't, they won't go arrest him for what he did. They won't do anything. So I said, "All right." They said. Officer Redden said, I'll put out a, you know, TRO, temporary restraining order. If he comes back by, just call us. I said, all right. That was about it. I'm, uh, say about, 
things actually die down after that. You know, things things die down pretty significantly. Uh, about yeah, about a week went by. I didn't, didn't hear nothing. There was no problems. You know, things seemed to be pretty cool. Well, I think Megan, Megan and Jeremy, they end up moving out. I end up moving in. I'm a uh, and they end up moving out, and I end up moving in. I move in. Uh, I want to say it was somewhere around, maybe maybe around the tenth. You know, I wasn't there for maybe maybe at the most a week and a half at the most. Moving in around the tenth, and literally like the day I moved in, Kyle Hooper moved in too. Now Kyle and Charlie had, I don't know what they had going on. I really don't. You know, it's just. They, I don't know, but they, they had something going on, and Charlie thought she was pregnant, and Kyle was, you know, thinking it was his, and it was, you know, I don't know, I let them ride out that boat. That was, I didn't know what to say about that. But we're sitting there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kyle works at McDonald's, you know. So he goes off, and he, he works at McDonald's, and he's bringing, you know, he's helping pay the rent, putting food in the house, helping pay the rent. Not really there too often. Uh, let's see. A couple days after I'm living there, you know, because Kyle, Kyle does, they, they do, you know, Kyle and Soto, because Jeremy moved out, but Kyle and Soto are still doing their, you know, their meth thing, and they gotten in that bath salt stuff, which, you know, at the time, it's, you know, it's being sold over the counter, so really don't have a problem with it being done around me, you know? It's legal, or it was. Ah. Uh, They'd stay up for nights at a time on that stuff, though. I want to say somewhere between, somewhere within that week, I think it might have been like, I don't know, 13th maybe. We're hanging out. Kyle came home from work, and he asked about, uh, he asked about trying to, you know, he, you know, what he did was he came to my door and he knocked on my door and he said, Mike, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, what's up? He said, somebody wants to buy, somebody wants to buy your gun. I'm going to sustain that objection. Let's move forward, please. Well, I guess we have to move on. Well, a couple nights later, uh, maybe three or four, me and Kyle actually got into it a couple times. Over, over the gun. But uh, somebody wanted, somebody wanted to buy it. I mean, him got into it. But he won't. Oh, I can't say that. I guess. <sighs> Getting kind of difficult. Oops. We discussed here, say you don't say what somebody said. Just say what you did as a result of it. A problem with it. I'm not gonna. I didn't want to, I don't want to help, you know, I, this kid had a problem, you know, he's, he's, well, he's 16, he's got a problem with dope, and, and I, I can see it because, you know, there's stuff going missing, stuff being pawned, you know, sold his, sold his laptop, sold his Xbox, you know, he didn't, you know, sold everything but the shirt off his back. Well, there's a guy at his work that's trying to, that wants to buy my gun off of me, and I only paid 200 bucks for this gun. I didn't, it's, I paid 200 bucks for this gun, it wasn't nothing special, but I didn't want to sell it because it was going to use, I would have got my money back with some still, but he was going to get dope from it, and I didn't want to help him do that, I, I, I don't like dope, you know, methamphetamines, I don't like it, you know, it, it has literally destroyed, you know, a big chunk of my family, and I, I can't, I can't stand it, but, We got into it, you know, yelling at each other. He ended up storming out, you know. Amber came in, you know, stuck her nose in it, told me I'm wrong. <sighs> a couple days later, you know, he comes and apologizes to me. You know, it, it, it ends up getting back into the same subject, though. You know, I tried telling him, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, I think I tell him, you know, I think you got a problem, you know. I don't, I don't want to help you do that. I don't want to help you get that kind of stuff. And it ended up 
turning into a fight, not not a physical fight, but you know, it blew up, you know, hate being called an addict, and he just snapped on me. <sighs> a couple days go by. Um, yeah, a couple days went by. I kind of pretty much avoided everybody. You know, I just, I didn't, I just, you know, I just wasn't clicking with everybody at that point. I just wanted to avoid everybody. Well, what was it? it was Soto, Kyle, Charlie, and Amber. They're out of living and watching TV. You know, everybody's out there having a good time, laughing. You know, I want to go out there and have a good time too. You know, I had just bought an 18-pack of beer. You know, I got some pot. I go out there to, I go out there to hang out with everybody too. I go out there. And when I go out there, you know, we hang out, you know, it's kind of like past no peace pipe, you know, just build that, you know, mend that fence. We're all hanging out. Soto, somebody, I think, in a, in a white minivan, somebody came and picked him up. Yeah, somebody came and picked him up. <coughs> and that left, you know, that pretty much left me, Amber, me, Amber, Charlie, and Kyle. Well, they had some show that was coming on, I don't, some, you know, some girly Desperate Housewives type stuff, something I wouldn't watch. And you know, I told him, I don't, I don't want to watch this. We ended up taking their TV and put it in their room for them. You know, and me and Kyle started hanging, went and hang, hung out in my room, you know, with the stereo up. Well, we're sitting there, and he's sitting there on his phone texting. Now, this, this had to have been, it couldn't have been, but like maybe like the, maybe not even the 14th, maybe the 15th, you know. And he's sitting there texting on his phone. You know, I know as I'm looking over, and you know, he just he's got this look on his face, you know, like like an upset look. And I ask him, you know, he's over there grunting, and he's texting. I ask him, I say, you know, what's wrong? What's going on? Oh, nothing. You know, Alyssa. Objection. Hearsay. Sustained. Not a lot of least describe who Alyssa is, though. I mean, how I know her at least. You can describe how you know her, but not what she said. All right, that's fine. Alyssa is is Kyle's. Well, I don't know if it was his girlfriend or not, but he 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 had a real obsession with her. You know, he he loved this girl to death. I'm, you know, he was was pretty bad about her. Well, something happened where she broke up with him, and he you know he throws the phone. You know, I, I remember I remember I went down to pick up something on the side of my bed. I was sitting there smoking a cigarette, or something. I went down to pick up something. I see this black phone just go flying out of the corner of my eye and hit my wall and just, you know, just the back come off, you know. The the battery went one way, the back went another, the phone went another direction. You know, I asked him, what the hell are you doing? And he's standing up and he's just, Ugh, you know. He's pissed. He's pissed because Alyssa, you know, Alyssa left him. He started talking about, he, he has to go talk to her. He's got to go work this out. And I tried telling him, I said, you know, first of all, you're on methamphetamines, you've been drinking, smoking pot, you're on bath salt, you don't need to go talk to this girl. You know, this, this girl isn't but like 14, or wasn't at the time. He was 16, she's like 14. And I tried to tell him, you know, you, you, don't, <laughs> you don't need to go down there. It's, it's like what, like 12 o'clock at night, and she's like half a mile away? <sighs> he, he, he just, he's not having it. He's going down there to talk to her anyways. You know, I just, you know, I can't do nothing about it. You know, I say, I tell him though, you know, going down there, if something happens, if something happens, you know, call me, you know, because I care about Alyssa. I, I really do. You know, it, it's not like she's not a friend or, you know, not like a good friend or nothing, but I care about her, you know. I, I know her and her little brother and her mom and just, you know, I care about them, you know. There are a lot of people, but I tell her, all right, I'm a, Anyways, I go out in the living room, you know, make I had the munchies. I remember I went out there to make some like ramen noodles or something. You know, he went out, he left, and it takes about it takes about 20 minutes to walk down to to where Alyssa lives in Bellevue Hills Estates. Well, while while I'm sitting there, I get a phone call. You know, I get a phone call. You know, I'm in a good mood, and I answer the phone. Now on the other end, there's just you know, there's just screaming. You know, I'm gonna kill the motherfucker. Objection ah. hearsay, Your Honor. Sustained. Well, tell him he needs to calm down. You need to get back to the house. You know, 
you, you need you need to get back to the house. You know, don't don't do nothing stupid. Get back to the house. He comes. I go outside for like I don't know, cause it takes like 20 minutes to get back. I walked outside, smoked a cigarette, like not even five minutes. And he, here comes somebody pulling up on a bike, you know. And I noticed, you know, cause cause Kyle wasn't riding a bike when he left. He was he walked. Here he comes back on a bike. He gets off the bike, and he, see, I told you it was his bike. You guys understand what that means at this point, but I could told you. He's saying it's Seth's bike, and I'm telling him, you know, I'm, I, 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 pretty much snap on him, you know. You just, you just stole someone's bike, you know. And I tried, I tried telling him, you know. You don't steal someone's bike and you bring it back to the house. You're bringing drama to the house. You know, what are you doing? And I said, okay, so he, so, so you caught him sleeping with your old lady. You caught him sleeping with Alyssa. And you steal his bike. What are you doing? You know, he got mad at that. And he took his bike. The, apparently it was Seth's bike. I don't know. I don't know what his bike looks like. He took this bike and he chucked it into the wood line. He threw the bike into the wood line. And he goes storming off past the house. He goes storming off into the house. You know, they don't fucking playing. He just he storms off in the house. I'm following behind him. You know, I'm, I just got my arms crossed. You know, I'm just watching him throw his temper tantrum. You know, like like stupid kid. Well, I go walking in behind him. You know, I'm telling him, you know, you need to need to chill. You know, I don't don't come in here raising hell. You know, got the girls in the other room. You come in raising hell. They're gonna start asking questions. Your little girlfriend Charlie, she's gonna wonder, you know, why were you over there? And it's just, you know, it's just it's gonna be a lot of drama. Well, I'm coming in the house, and he's probably about ten feet in front of me. Come in the house, and he goes storming, storming in the living room. I figure he's going towards the bathroom or something. Well, he's making a beeline for my room. Now, I guess I gotta cover this before I get to that. This house is a rat problem, right? I own a 22 revolver. I brought this gun to this house because there is such a rat problem. Like, it's bad. Like, I literally killed like six or seven rats within like a week, and it, it was it was pretty bad. I taught everybody how to use that gun. I showed everybody how to use it. You know, just just don't point it at anybody and don't point it at yourself. You know, if you're gonna use it, here, here's the bullets right there. There was no trigger lock on it. I kept it right on this black shelf. Like, you look right into my room, it's right there on the shelf. It's right out in the open. Anybody can get to it because, you know, if I'm gone, because I don't carry it with me. I do not carry it. If I'm gone, you see a rat, shoot it, you know? Things are varmints, man. You shoot the damn thing. Well, he's making a beeline for my room. There's this gun sitting up here. And it wasn't until I realized, when I seen him reaching up for it, and I realized he was going for my gun. Now, that's, you know, I, I'm freaking out, you know. And I, I go, I go kind of running after him, you know. He's got a gun in his hand. When he turns around, he's got a gun. And this gun is loaded. You know, I, I keep the gun loaded, you know. When he comes turning around with this gun, and I see it coming towards me. I remember I grabbed the barrel because he's coming this way with it. I grabbed the barrel. I grabbed his hand. And I wrenched it back on him, taking the gun from him. And what I did was I put the hammer of the gun straight to my hand. I still got the scar, you know, two and a half years later. I put it. It literally went almost all the way through the other side. And I didn't really realize it until afterwards. But I took the gun from him, and he's trying to get it. You know, he's still trying to get it. He's, he's in a rage. He's trying to get it. Well, I turn around. I press, <coughs> press the button on the side. Pull out the slide, I push out the cylinder, you know, put the slide in my pocket, put the cylinder in the other pocket, you know, without one of those pieces, the gun's no more effective than a, you know, a damn hammer. Well, I'm sitting here and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I buck him off me because he's, you know, I've got my back to him, he's trying to reach to get it. Push him off me and I'm holding the gun, I'm like, look, man, you need to chill, you need to chill. And I got the gun, I'm holding it down like this. It's got no cylinder, it's got no bullets in it, it's got nothing in it. Well, he's, he's going, he's, he sees my hand, he says, I'm bleeding, I look down. And I'm like, I'm bleeding like a stuck pig, you know, and I'm just, I'm bleeding all over this damn gun. Well, he sits down, he's crying, he's just, he's, just, he's, he's a mess. Like, I don't know if it was just the drugs and the emotions, but he was a mess. He's crying, I don't know what to do. And talking about Alyssa, and he's just, he's, 
I didn't know how to handle that. You know, I, I really, I'm, I'm not good when, when, when guys start crying on me like that. When he starts, you know, he starts just crying and everything. I, I tell him, you know, you gotta, you know, Charlie's sitting here, you know, you need, you need to think about this, you know. Charlie's sitting here pregnant. You're out here, you know, screwing around with this little girl out here, and you're losing your damn mind over that. You need to be worrying about her, you know. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Well, I tell him that, you know, I call him down finally, you know, after after yelling at him. You know, I, I yelled at him pretty bad over that, you know. He finally calms down, you know. He ends up he ends up going to sleep. I remember because he went and kicked because Amber and Charlie were in the bedroom watching watching TV. He ended up kicking Amber out. Him and Charlie went in there and did their thing. And Amber came out. Me and Amber hung out for the rest of the night. Went to sleep. Um, I remember the next day. This be like maybe the 15th, 16th. Had to be like the 16th. <clears throat> I wake up in the morning. You know, I grab my clothes. I sweat a lot when I sleep. I wake up. I grab my clothes. I'm gonna go go hop in the shower real quick. The only shower I don't I don't use the common bathroom. It as you've seen in the pictures, that bathroom is just destroyed. That bathroom is just disgusting. You know, I don't even go in the common bathroom. I use Charlie's bathroom in the master bathroom. Well, I go in there. You know, I set my clothes down. I crank the hot water on. Kyle's laying in Charlie's bed. You know, he's he's it's kind of it's kind of funny though. He's I'm a kind of half naked hanging out on the bed. You know, I'm, I'm there to wake him up for you know he's got he's got work. Remember, I smacked him on the bottom foot. You know, wake up, you got work. You know, you got to go to work. I hop in the shower and everything. You know, sit there and smoke my morning joint. I come out of the bathroom. You know, he's up or he's not. He's not in there. And Charlie's Charlie's still asleep in her bed. I go into my room. Amber's asleep in my bed. You know, I throw my clothes. I throw my clothes in my room. And I noticed Soto. He he came back. He's sleeping on the couch. I don't know what time he came back. But I go in the kitchen and uh, I look in there and I look and I see Kyle and Kyle has my Kyle's got a bottle of liquor. You know, Admiral Nelson 101 proof spice rum. You know, he's got this bottle and he's got this cup and he's got you know he's got some soda. I look at him. And go, what are you doing? You know, he's sitting there drinking. Talking about you know it's just talking about he doesn't know what to do and it, he, you know he can't handle this. Told me I mean, you know you, you need to stop. You know I don't. You got work. You know oh, I'm just gonna call in sick. Calling sick for what? You're not sick. You know and I, I really I really harp on him too because I knew if if I hit him with some tough love because if he didn't if I didn't he wouldn't have he. He wouldn't. Have, he would have called him sick that day. He would have called him sick the next day. He would have called him sick the next day. You know, I had to tell him. You know, so why don't you just call him in and give him, you know, your two week notice? Why don't you just call him in and quit? You know, what are you talking about? Well, you know, you're gonna let the fact that you caught Seth sleeping with your girlfriend, you know, or wasn't even his girlfriend. She broke up with him. You know, and you're not. You know, you're, you're gonna you're gonna do this because of that. You know, 20 years down the road, you're gonna quit your job because of this too. I'm sitting there telling him. You know, what are you doing? And, you know, I just need something to make it through the day. I guess he was out of dope or something. I don't know. And, uh, well, I had, I had some Xanaxes in my room, little three milligram green ones. I don't take them. Actually, I hate the way they make me feel. But a guy that I did a tattoo for kept dodging me and finally just, can I just give you these? Like, yeah, whatever. I asked him if he wants a couple of them. You know, can I just give you a couple of those? You know, you'll be all right then. Said yeah, I went and I grabbed like I think three of them. I gave them to him, you know. Judge, I'm an objective. Relevance at this point. Sustained. Oh, thank you. Let's move forward. All right. Well, he went off to work. He went off to work. He came back. I don't remember what we did that day. He came back. Actually, I do remember. I was gone that whole day. He came back and he's some, uh, you know, he's he's high, you know, he's 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 doing all right. He asked me if I want to drink with him that night. You know, I said, yeah. Now, I'd been working things out with, with my girlfriend at Irvo, when I took a break with. I'd been working things out with her, and I was actually supposed to be at her house that night. Well, me, you know, get to one drink, and then, you know, next thing you know, there's another drink, and next thing you know, I'm, you know, I'm slammed like 10 of them. 
I ended up calling her and, and you know, telling her, I, you know, I, hey, I'm drunk. I can't come over, you know. Well, 16th, the next day, I'm pretty sure it was the 16th. No, this is, this is the 17th. This is the day, this is the day that all this actually happened, where, 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 when Seth was actually killed. I wake up that morning. I, said, I, when I roll out of bed. I grab my stuff. I go in the bathroom and take a shower. You know, I'm, I'm hungover. I you know, throw everything on the toilet. You know, crank the hot water on. Take a minute for the steam up. I smoke a joint. I'm a. Uh, I remember I, I was I was almost out of cigarettes and I was, I was out of pot. Well, I never get done with the shower. Went college for work. You know, pretty sure I went college for work. And I go and I go out in the living room. No, that's what it was. Kyle and Soto were still away from the night before. Like they, they hadn't they they've been up all night doing bath salt. I come out in the living room and I go in the kitchen make something to eat. I go in the kitchen make something to eat. Soto comes in asking if I can have a, if he can have a cigarette. Well, I asked him if he wanted to go to the store real quick and just go grab a you know, grab a pack and I'll give him like five of them. Because I had five left in my pack. He said, Yeah, I gave him like five cigarettes, I gave him like five bucks. He left and he went and did his you know, he went over there and got him. He came back. He gave the cigarette or gave a cigarette to Kyle. Kyle ended up going off to work, and uh, yeah, Kyle went off to work. And it's Sunday, you know. I, I like to clean, you know, at least clean a little bit. It's kind of been instilled in me by my my family, you know. Sunday, you go to church and you clean. But uh, you know, I went. And I cleaned up my room. Amber and Charles was to clean up their room and and the kitchen. So we cleaned up his area out there in the living room, and. After that, it was just, you know, me and Soto got done, and the girls kind of tell you, know, either, either help or, you know, get the hell out of the way. So we chose to get the hell out of the way. We went outside. We went outside, and we started picking up stuff outside, and, like, there was sticks everywhere. We ended up making a big pile of sticks, just a huge pile of sticks, you know, because we have bonfires, like, every night, like, literally, like, not even kidding, like, we have a bonfire, like, literally every other night, just, just because. We don't with that, and uh, <laughs> I get a phone call. Yeah, we got done with that. We went inside. We hung out for a little bit more. I ended up getting a phone call from the girl I was supposed to go to her house. I was, I was I was supposed to go to her house that night, the night before, and I completely blew her off, and I've been dreading this phone call. Well, I get this phone call from her, and she's, you know, she she, she chews in me pretty good. You weren't, you know, you didn't show up, da, 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 you know. You gotta understand this kind of gross shit. She's straight A honor students, honor society, captain of the guard. For her really chewing me like that, it's kind of it takes a lot. You know, I realize I'm really messing up here with her. I told her I'm gonna be there. You know, I, I make try to make up to her. I said, look, babe, I'll be there tonight. All right, I'll be there tonight. I promise, I'll be there tonight. And she says, you know, you know, you sure you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna just blow me off again? I said, no, I'll be there tonight. I promise. Well, that was that. That was that had to be around like two or three o'clock when that happened. <clears throat> well, I'm not gonna walk till it gets dark out. You know, I gotta walk, and I'm I'm a Michigan boy. I'm you know I'm from up where it's cool. You know, it, down here I can't I can't handle the heat. So I wait for it to get dark. You know, start I start <coughs> walking to, to her house. <clears throat> well, yeah, so. Yeah, around that time comes around. I told everybody, I said, hey, look, you know, I'm going to leave. I'm going to be gone. You know, I'm not going to be back tonight. See you guys later, you know. At that time, yeah, before that, though, <clears throat> James Havens, the stepdad to Amber and Kyle, brought Kyle over and dropped him off, you know, at the house. He ended up hanging out for a little bit. And a mutual friend of mine, of mine in Soto's, he was over there. Kid named Brandon, he's sitting there playing the guitar. Well, I used to BMX, you know. I'm on this bike and I'm sitting there doing tricks. And what I did was I ended up falling off the bike and messing my knee up. I got a trick knee and it, and I hurt it pretty bad that night. And I actually swelled up pretty bad the next day. But <clears throat> I'm sitting there and I was going to get a ride back. But I had went in the house and by the time, you know, I finished messing around with my knee, everybody's on left, you know. Well, around 7 o'clock rolls around. Remember, everybody was out in the backyard. A couple people were out in the backyard. I go out there and I have to go to tell them. 
you know, hey guys, I'm leaving. And Amber's about to start this. Uh, Amber and I'll, I don't know, maybe Kyle was out there. Well, they're about to start the bonfire. You know, we just went through a burn ban. I'm telling them, you know, don't 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 light the fire right now. You know, wait till you know, wait till the night. You know, I don't want the fire marshals coming out here and issuing tickets to everybody. It's the last thing I need. Well, they, you know, they say, all right. Well, I come back in the house and I get, you know, I'm about to, I'm about to walk out the front door. Well, they come to me. They come to me, you know, Mike, Mike, Mike. You know, while you're gone, can we drink? You know, the girls, they drink, they drink the liquor, and I, I said, yeah, go ahead. I end up leaving, and what I was doing is I was making a couple stops before I um, uh, made, I was gonna make a couple stops before I, I got to my girlfriend's house. First stop, I was gonna go pick up some pot. Well, come out of Charlie's house, walk straight to the road. Now, if you turn, turn left, and you go all the way down, you can turn left again. Now, you go down this road, you're going to hit a sugar sand road. Now, there was a problem with these people, you know, when it gets close to dark, you know, people usually let us use this part of the driveway. It's a path to get from one neighborhood to the next. Usually don't care, but, you know, stupid kids were vandalizing their property, and they came out waving guns one time, and it just... Well, what me and Soul did was we, we ended up cutting a path right at the end of Charlie's Road going into this neighborhood. The same neighborhood, actually the neighborhood I grew up in as a kid when I was younger, a lot younger. I go over, I'm going to cut down one road, take a left. I'm literally on 137th, which is where I used to live. I go down one or two roads, go left. I go down this road, and I come up to the guy's house. You know, I knock on the door. You know, we're in there. We're hanging out for a little bit. I buy some pot. His cousin goes up to the store, you know, and I have him get me a couple packs. You know, I have him get me, have him get me a pack of cigarettes, you know, and that saved me like 20 minutes of my walk to go to Taylor's house, my girlfriend's house. Well, I leave the house after about, I don't know, we've been there maybe 45 minutes. I leave the house and come out. Instead of turning right to go to the quicking, I turn left. And I come down on 137. Now 137 crosses literally all the way through this neighborhood. There's a, there's another neighborhood in between mine and my girlfriend's neighborhood, and I'm a decent sized neighborhood too. And it cuts all the way through there. You gotta take like one right and one left, and you literally you come out into her neighborhood and you just gotta weave your way through. Well, I get to walking down this road. You know, I realize you know these, these people that I buy my pot from. You know, they work at a horse farm and you know. And I come out smelling like hay and horses. You know, this, this girl I date, she's, she's like allergic to everything under the sun, man. She's allergic to everything. Well, I decide I'm gonna cut back to Charlie's real quick, take like, what, 15, 20 minute detour. I go over there, I'm, you know, I'm gonna hop in the shower real quick, knock this, this smell off. Get back to the house, you know, cut through the path, I'm coming down the road. I'm literally like right in front of the house at the road. And I can hear music coming from the house. You know, I figure everybody's having a good time and everything. Well, I go, I go up to the front door. The, the metal door, there's, there's two doors, the glass door and there's a metal door. The metal door is open, but the glass door is closed. There's light spilling out in the yard. And I'm looking in, I can see it. Amber and Charlie are sitting there at the sink making drinks. You know, they're sitting there, you know, pouring shots or whatever the hell they were doing. Well, I walk in, and, and literally, like, the first thing I smell, just it hits me like a ton of bricks. I smell this rank, nasty, like, raunchy smell. And the only way I can describe it is it's, it's the smell of when people are, you know, smoking dope, you know. It, that's, that's just way, I don't know, it's got that odor to it, you know. And I didn't know these people were cooking it in the house or something. Hell, I've only been gone for, like, an hour. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm raising hell, you know, what are you guys doing? You know, I tell Amber, you know, you got chemo treatment in, like, a week. Charlie, you're saying you're pregnant, you know, this air is thick with this dope smoke, and you're sitting there breathing this stuff in. You know, I tell them, open the door, you know, air it out, they go outside, you know. I grab a couple of beers, you know, I'm going to go take, went to go to my room, take a soma for my knee. My knee was hurting like hell. I walk into the living room, or Soto actually came from the living room to ask me what was going on. I looked at him like, you know, what do you mean what's going on? What are you guys doing in this house? Well, I blow past him. I go into... Going to, I'm a, I blow past him, and there's Kyle sitting on the to the left on this couch, right inside the living room, 
And on the table, there's you know there's there's powder on the table. There's aluminum foil, which I guess they they put it in. They you know they run a lighter underneath it and it smokes up. Well, they're just sitting there, you know, all this stuff's on the table. And I'm just you know I just blow past them, looking at them, shaking my head. I go into my room, I grab my clothes up, take them to Charlie's bathroom. You know, I remember I slammed my window open. And Charlie yelled at me to you know don't break the window. Put everything in the bathroom. You know, I crank the hot water on. I crank the hot water on, you know, I got a couple minutes before it gets hot. I go to my room to take a, take one of the somas, you know, muscle relaxers for my knee. I end up going into my room. Now, after the incident with Kyle where my, he tried getting a hold of my gun, I started keeping the gun up in the closet, up on the shelf. Now, I keep I keep a few things on the shelf, you know, I, I keep, keep the gun on the shelf. I keep a bottle of pills, you know, my muscle relaxers. Drug paraphernalia, you know, bongs and gas masks and, you know, that stuff. Well, I go up there, and I'm, I'm only about, what, 5'4", five, 5'5", five, 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 and this shell's about, you know, maybe almost, you know, 5, you know, it's taller than me. Well, I go to reach up, and I grab this pill bottle, and I pull it down. Now, I keep the pill bottle in the corner. I keep the gun in front of it inside the holster. Well, I pull it down, and just something doesn't feel right. I couldn't put my, you know, at the time I couldn't put my finger on what it was, but I pulled the gun down, or I pulled the pills down. I took, I took the pill bottle, opened it, took one of the pills out, and I took the pill. And when I took the pill, I went to go put it back, and I went to go slide the gun back in front of it. But, you know, the gun's in the holster, you know, so I go to slide the holster, and I realize, you know, this holster, you know, it doesn't weigh like it should. You know, this, this is a big pistol, you know. Well... I realize, you know, just something isn't right. You know, it's just, it should weigh more. Well, I get up in the closet and I look up. The holster's there, but the gun isn't there. The holster's there, but the gun isn't. And I'm thinking, I must have knocked it out of the holster, knocked it down on the floor. You know, there's drums and boxes and stuff in, in the closet. And I get flipping through everything. I literally flip through everything. And I got about, you know, and, and it hit me. Now, I'm, I'm no genius, but I can put, you know, I can put one plus one equals two, and I can put two plus two equals four. Okay, Kyle doesn't get paid till till Monday, which is the next day. You know, Kyle doesn't get paid till tomorrow. He was already complaining he was out of dope. He was already trying to sell my gun to get dope, and now my gun's missing. You know, it didn't take too long for me to put that together. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm already <laughs> pissed off. I'm about to go raise hell with him. I go to storming out my room, and I look where Kyle was sitting. There's Soto. Well, I'm going to go confront Soto first and ask what's going on. I end up getting in the middle of the hallway, and I look. I look to the, I look to the right of me, and where the common bathroom is, and there's Kyle in there. You know, he's been over. He's got his hand on the sink. He's been over. And he's picking up something. And I, don't, I didn't realize what it was at the time, but he was picking up something. And I, I confront him right then, you know. And this is why I said to him, too. I remember specifically I said it like this for a reason. I said, excuse my language, but I said, Kyle, where's my motherfucking shit? That's what I told him. And he turned around and said, I don't, I don't know where your gun is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know, where you're, I don't know anything about your gun. Now, I never said anything about my gun to him. I didn't say anything about my gun to him. He just told on himself. You know, I, 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 I didn't say anything about my gun. And he just sat there and just, you know, I don't know anything about your gun. I don't know where your gun is. Well, right then, I just, I, I lose it on him. I, I, I snap on him, you know. I call him everything, you know, everything in the book but nice, you know. I, I you know, yellow belly thief, you drug addict, you know, you stole my stuff. And he gets up in my face, you know, he, he storms up, pumps his chest out. You know, this kid weighs about like, what, like 240? He's like five foot seven, five foot eight. He's a big kid. You know, he's freaking huge. And, you know, he puts his two fingers together and he gets to poke at me in my chest, you know. And I don't, I don't, I don't like that, you know. First of all, you're wrong. You know you're wrong. You're in the wrong. And you're trying to, you know, trying to put it, you know, trying to act like you're not. Well, I'm sick and tired of you always calling me a drug addict. Well, I go to push him. And I remember I went to push him. When I pushed him, he went back maybe like, what, like maybe six inches, you know. And like I said, this is a big guy. And he's cranked up on dope. I pushed him. He didn't go back with maybe like six inches, and he's got his hand right here, or it was like right here. It's about right here now. Well, that turned into a fist. Next thing I know, he hit me. 
When he hit me, I hit the back wall, which is only about a couple feet away. Me and him are fighting in, right there in that little hallway. You know, we're, 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 we're swinging on each other. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying I, I, can't, I can't hold my own in a fight, but I was absolutely losing that fight. I'm, uh, well, Soto came and got between us and tried, tried breaking it up. And he ended up getting hit in it. And next thing I know, he's, next thing I know, I got both of them swinging on me. You know, because I accidentally, I accidentally hit him. Well, all I do is I just, you know, I, I put my arms over my head and I curl up. And I hit the wall and I, I slide down the wall. I'm not going to fetal position, you know. No stop eventually. I feel my hands get yanked down. I get hit in the face. You know, I felt my nose, you know, I felt my nose bust, you know. Feel the blood, you know. Well, he punched me in my nose, you know, broke, you know, I think he broke my nose. That thing, that's when he broke my nose. <laughs> but... My arms were down on my side, and I just I couldn't bring my hands up. Like I'm in a daze, and I hear, you know, I feel the hit stop, and I hear it to the right of me, where I'm a, uh, there's my room, there's Charlie's room. Well, I hear it come from more like my room. I hear Soto telling Kyle, you know, you need to chill, man. You need you need to chill, man. He's done. He's had enough. He's done. And I'm kind of lolling my head over to the side. And I look at him, and Soto's kind of by the arm like this, you know, trying to hold him back, but he's standing behind him. Well, Kyle pushes off him. Fuck that. Ah. But he comes up to me. He's storming up to me. And I thought he was going to hit me. Well, Soto comes up behind him and puts him in like a half Nelson, you know, trying to stop him. And, you know, he's he about maybe a foot away from me. Well, when he puts me, when he puts Soto in like that half Nelson, and I thought, you know, I thought, like, phew, you know, I'm, I'm all right. Well, Kyle picks up his foot and he starts kicking me in the face. He literally, and as you've seen the pictures, he picked up his foot and, you know, I just seen it coming. All I can do is I, I close my eyes and I'm just. I'm hoping like hell I just get knocked out quick. You know, I just didn't. It's kind of weird because I just seemed flat. I just closed my eyes and I just, just like flashed the white light and it felt like somebody taking a cotton pillow and just, you know, pushing my head to the side. The first kick, I remember I heard my, I remember I heard my nose just, just like a bag of chips, just, <sighs> ew. <clears throat> felt that, you know, got kicked a few more times and I heard a crash to my left. My head's kind of all over to the left. And I, I remember I looked, the coffee table's flipped over and spilt out. The couch has moved away from the table. Kyle and Soto are rolling around on the ground. You know, they're, they're wrestling around on the ground and stuff. I take this time to stand up. I don't even I don't even know what's going on. I just know I need to stand up, put my hands up, you know. Because I don't know if he's coming back. They end up getting up. Like I said, the coffee table's flipped. There's ashtrays spilled. There's drinks spilled. It's just everywhere. Kyle's on the other side, you know, Kyle's, Kyle's on the, towards where the kitchen and the living room meet, and Soto's standing between them, yeah, Soto's standing between me and him, and he's, you know, he's sitting there telling me, you know, you need to stop, you know, you need to stop, and I stand up, and he's screaming, you know, fuck me, I'm saying time I was calling me, you know, accusing me of shit, and blah, blah, blah. Amber comes in, you know, Amber comes running in, because she was outside, like, this whole thing, like, unfolding, like, maybe, I don't know, 10 seconds at the most. It, it was really quick. She comes in screaming at me, what's going on? You know, before I could even say anything, he starts accusing me of accusing him of taking stuff and calling him a drug addict and she jumps on my case. My guy always accusing him of taking shit and blah, 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 blah. And I tell him, you know, you know, I just, at that point, you know, my tongue was kind of in a knot up until then. Just kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know. At that point, I just, you know, I, I, Everything just came back, you know. I come home. It, it, it just, it, it really pissed me off. I come home. The house is filled with dope smoke. My gun's missing. I done caught him into a lie. He just beat the hell out of me, you know. He, he, he stomped. He stomped me. And and I'm getting yelled at right now. I let her have him. I, I yell at her back, you know. You know, you know, forget you. You know, I'm sick and tired of always sticking up for your brother, you know. Always sticking up for your brother. Always, you know. You, He's never wrong, you know. I let her have it. I, I, I flat out, I just let her have it. And, you know, and then Charlie jumps in. Charlie jumps in, you know, to save Amber. You know, Charlie jumps in, you know, Mike, I don't need this in my house. And all I remember what she said was, you know, my house, my house. You know, forgetting, you know, that I'm paying the damn bills here pretty much. Well, I lose it on her. You know, I, you know, forget you and your house. You know, I tell you what. You know, it's your house. You don't need this in your house. I'm out of here. I don't need this. I just I don't. You, know, you, you want to act like this? I don't. I don't need to be here. I, I really don't. I can I can go 
live pretty much wherever I want. I don't need to be living here dealing with this. So I leave, or I'm a, well, I don't leave yet. I turn around, I go to the bathroom, I realize I'm dripping blood. I actually, what, what made me realize it was I had blood dripping from my face into my eye. I, had, I literally had blood dripping into my eye. Yeah, it was my right side of my face. I had just blood just all down my face and dripping on my chest. I didn't have a shirt on, but I had blood dripping all the way down my chest. I turn around, I go to walk into to Charlie's bathroom where I got the water still running. I go in there, you know, I got Amber and Charlie walking behind me. Oh, Mike, you know, wait, hold on, what's going on? What's going on? Now they're backpedaling because I you know, told them all off. And I'm about to leave and take the money with me. I get in the bathroom, I look in the mirror. I got a cut here, I got a cut here. Like, literally, I, I ended up holding up my eye like that. The cut was so bad, like I could actually see my, my eye socket, like the bone. I could actually see the bone where, where when he kicked me that it split, kind of like, in a, like in, a, in a moon shape. And I had, it was, this one right here wasn't too much of a cut, it was just more like a rug burn. I had a busted lip, my nose was all the way to one side, I had two black eyes. I look, I look bad. I look, I look pretty bad. And I already know from, from having my nose broke before, you know, got a nose broke, best thing to do is, you know, to realign it as soon as you can because if you wait, it's just, it's, it's going to hurt like hell more the more you wait. Look in the mirror and I grab my nose and I just, you know, I pull my nose out. You know, I pull it to one side and I pull it out and I realign it, which obviously I didn't do too good of a job. But I, I realign my nose and blood just starts flowing. I plug my nose and I got Amber and Charlie behind me just going off about, you know, you know, she, she's going off. What's going on? I'm like, what happened? And I tell her. I tell her, you know, you know, I'm sick and tired. You know, your brother stole my shit. Your brother know he stole it, and I'm just we're we're just getting into it, you know. And she's just she's, you know, he didn't do it. I see, you know, that's your problem right there. That right there is your problem. You you don't listen to no one else, you know. You don't you don't you think your brother's you know king shit on Turn Mountain. You're not you know, you're not you're always sticking up for him. I say, you know what? I don't need this. I'm out of here, you know. Well, she she gets pissed off. Well, f you, you know, it turns into a, a pissing match, really. F you, no, f you. Ah. They end up storming out. I remember I, I got blood all over me. Like I'm, I got blood all over me. I hop in the shower. I try to get the blood off me as much as I can. You know, the blood stops dripping on my nose finally. Wasn't in the shower maybe 10, 15 minutes, not even. Try to get the blood off me as much as I possibly could. I get out the shower, um, everything's relatively quiet, you know, I get out the shower and I grab them a A&D ointment, it's what you put on tattoos to help them, uh, to help them heal. <coughs> well, I grab some A&D ointment, it's kind of like triple antibiotic, and I put it in the cuts, you know, try to, I don't want it to get infected, damn sure I don't want to get sweat in it. And I, I do that, you know, put on deodorant and everything, I get dressed, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave, I'm, I'm out of here, you know, I'm, I'm I'm fed up with this, you know. I've had enough. I'm ready to leave. I go to my room. I remember I walked out my room. I didn't see nobody. Like I just, I didn't, I didn't see nobody. And I walked out my room. And I go, or I walked out Charlie's room, went into my room. I went in there. I went and grabbed the soma bottle. The bottle it only had like maybe two left. I remember because I took, I took the last pills that were in it. There's only like two, I think. I took the last two. And I washed it down with beer, and uh. Let's see, after I did that, I looked out and I seen Kyle and Soto were sitting on the three-wheeler in the front yard. You know, and it, you, you can see right from my room because the blinds are up. Soto sees me and he comes inside and he comes to my room. And he, you know, he starts apologizing to me. You know, my bad, man, you know, I didn't, you know, and I tell him, you know, you, you don't jump in the middle of two people swinging on each other if you don't you expect to get hit. You know, I tell him, you know, he, you know, he, he apologized to me. I said it's fine. I said, you know, he's like, you really leaving? And I tell him, I said, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I said, look, keep Kyle away from me. Keep Kyle away from me until I leave. You know, do me a favor, just keep him away from me till I leave. He goes, he he walks out, and him and Kyle end up going around to the backyard. Well, I flipped that entire house because earlier Amber told me that. There's no way he could have sold the gun because she was with him the whole time. So I figured, you know, the gun has to be around here somewhere. I flip that house. I, I, 
I destroyed that house looking for that gun. Just destroyed it. I, man, I tore up Charlie's room. And when, when I went to Charlie's room, I noticed I looked out. They had started the fire in the backyard. And this, I don't, I don't know what time this was. It only around 9 o'clock. It had to be just around 9 o'clock. Flipped that entire house. And the whole time I'm due because I had beer in the fridge. And I'm, I don't plan on coming back other than the next day to get my, you know, get my stuff. So I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm drinking beer, and I'm, you know, I'm mad. My face is killing me. My knee hurts. I'm slamming beer. I'm just, I'm slamming them. You know, I end up drinking a total, I don't know, like eight beers, a decent amount. We had an 18 pack to start out the day, and I'm uh, I end up drinking that whole 18 pack. But <clears throat> I remember, because when, when Soto was in my room and I was talking to him, I asked him, because I noticed the girls weren't in there, weren't even in the house. I asked where they were. <clears throat> he said <clears throat> that after I got in the shower. Objections, anything Justin Soto said, it's hearsay. I'm going to overrule that objection. Go ahead. I asked him where the, where the girls were. He said that, said that Amber, and Kyle had gotten into an argument. I guess she confronted him. When she confronted him, they blew up in each other's face. Something got <clears throat> something got thrown. I don't, I don't know who threw what at who, but I know how Kyle can get. Kyle's he he's he's real real short tempered, and he he's he's kind of really unpredictable. I'm kind of worried about her, you know. I try calling her. When I call her, you know, it's just it's 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 an argument, you know it. I don't know why you're calling me, Buck. You got a click. She's hung up on me, you know. So all right, you know, I probably probably deserve that, you know, because I, I did I did chew her out pretty bad. I call her back again, you know. I I tried talking to her, you know. Look, man, I'm you know, just trying to. She wasn't having it. We got into it some more. <clears throat> and I told her, you know, it, it got into another pissing match. And I told her, you know, I don't need this. I'm out of here. You know, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow to pick up my stuff. I told her that. I said, I'll be back tomorrow. I'm leaving right now. I'll be back tomorrow to pick up my stuff. Well, that was that was pretty much that. Like I said, I flipped the house trying to find that find trying to find that gun. Couldn't find it. Tried calling her back, you know, to see if she see if she you know maybe she knows where it's at. And I calmed down about 15 minutes and I call her back. No answer. I said, All right, <laughs> probably deserve that because I hung up on her last time. And uh, about five minutes go by, I try calling her again. No answer. And uh, after that, it was pretty much, you know, I, I decided, you know, she's not going to answer this last phone call. I'm just out of here, you know. You know, screw the damn gun, you know. I don't, I'm not going to sit here. I leave. I walk out of the house. I walk out the front door because everybody's, in, you know, because Kyle and Soda are in the back. Walk out the front door. Look at the jury, Mr. Barga. You don't need to be looking up there. I walk out the front door, and I go right. I go heading towards the dumpster. I'm walking towards the um uh, the driveway. You know, I always had enough common courtesy to let Soto know, hey, I'm leaving. You know, you guys go back in the house now. I took the empty beer bottle I had, and I, I threw it in the dumpster. You know, I'm not going to say, hey, guys, I'm leaving. You know, I just, just let them know I'm going to make a noise, and they see me, and I left. Now... I could have gone down to 137th, which would have taken me straight shot through, but I'm all beat up. I'm drunk. I'm high. You know, I'm, I'm just, I, I don't, I look like hell, you know? And this is the same road that my my dad and my grandma live on, you know? And I don't, I'm, I don't want to go past their house and then be outside, you know, let the dogs use the bathroom. They sit out there, in, you know, in the garage and watch the news and stuff. <coughs> I don't want to walk by and them see me walking by and, and, and you know, I'm all messed up. You know, grandma, grandma would have a, you know, condemn shit if she did. <clears throat> so instead of turning left at the end of, the, of Charlie's driveway, I turn right. I go walking down and I get a phone call. I remember I got a phone call. Um, I remember from Amber or Charlie. I got a phone call, though, and it just, at this point, I don't want to talk to him. I already left the house. You know, the only reason why I was calling them back is to see if they knew where the gun was. So I, I just ignored the phone call. I got to the end of the road, and I, so I'm a, I don't know what it's called. I, I really, I really don't know what the name of the road is. We used to call it Railroad, but that's not the official name. 
And I'm like, if you go right down this road, it'll take you down, or you go left down this road, it'll take you to Bellevue Hills Estates. If you go right down this road, it'll take you the direction I'm trying to go towards my girlfriend's house. Get to the end of this road, I turn left, or I turn, I turn right, you know, going heading away from Bellevue Hills Estates. Now I remember I had my phone out because there's 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 like no lights on this road, really. There's 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 no lights on this road. And I remember I had my phone out, and it was like 9:25. Remember, because I had my phone out because I was using the light to light up the road because no one told me when you come down here, snakes will come out on the road at night, you know, to get the heat from the day. No one told me that. It only took one time to figure that out. I'm sitting there, and I've got my phone. I'm using, you know, pressing the side button. It's one of the old-fashioned flip phones with a little LED front screen. I'm sitting there and pressing the button as I'm walking, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm mad, and I'm pissed, and I'm smoking cigarettes, I'm chain-smoking, and I'm walking just... just just venting, you know. I get all the way down. I get all the way down to the end of this road. Now, it usually takes about, I don't know, 15 minutes to get down to the end of this road. And it took me probably about, remember I got down to the end of the road and it, it had taken me like a little bit over 20 minutes just to get down to the end of this road. Which, you know, with my knee being the way it is, I'm, I'm not surprised. Anyways, I get down this road. And there's a little path right across the road. This path leads you into the next neighborhood and you cut through. You know, you just gotta weave your way through. Well, I end up, you know, I make a couple stops, you know, underneath when I found a street light, roll up a couple joints, smoked a couple joints. I'm walking. I end up getting all the way down to the uh you know, I was telling you about that road that, that cuts straight through, 130 137th. It cuts straight through, goes right, goes left, and it's a straight shot. I end up overshooting that road. I end up coming up like right behind one of the Quick Kings, and uh, I remember it like right before I got up to around the Quick King, I just I felt it in my stomach. You, you know that feeling, you, know, you drinking, everything's fine, everything's fine and dandy while you're drinking, until you throw up. And then when you throw up, you're just you know you're done. You know you, you, you it's game over then. I remember I went to the side of the road and I just I just I threw up all over the side of the road. It was bad. I just oof. Well, I ended up walking up with the Quick King, and I look at my phone, you know, because I'm, I'm still probably about 20-minute walk before I get to Taylor's house. And I, I, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, you know, I'm looking at my phone. She's got school tomorrow. She has school tomorrow. You know, she's got to be up at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, it's, it's, it's like 1130. It's, it's late, you know. There's no way I'm going to be able to get there before, you know, what, like 12 o'clock. And even if I do, you know, she's going to, you know, you smell like puke and beer and cigarettes. You know, she'll put me on the couch. I'm trying to avoid all that. Well, what I do is I call my dad and come pick me up. And I call him and he, you know, he answers the phone. Yeah, I'm trying to get a ride back to Charlie's. He answers the phone and says, he was, you know, do you know what time it is? I'm like, yeah, I know what time it is. And, uh. You know, I said, Dad, you know, can you come pick me up? And he, you know, he said, Well, where are you at? You know, I'm behind the second Quick King I'm over here. I'm only probably about maybe four miles away from the house, maybe from my grandma's house. And he says, You know, he says, Yeah, I'll, I'll come pick you up. You know, he's pretty understanding because I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a vehicle. You know, and he's pretty, pretty understanding about that. Well. Call him and he he comes to pick me up. I'm sitting there waiting for him. He pulls in and I get in and he notices my face. And, you know, and it it really didn't look too bad at the time because it wasn't you know all scabbed over or nothing. But I, I told him you know I got no fire or everything's fine. Just you know everything's fine. We pulled excuse me, excuse me, Mr. out. Pick me up. Turn left. Went down to this four way at the power station. Turn left again. What we end up doing is making a big square, going back. We end up, uh, got the railroad, one that Charlie's road is off of, went down it, turned left down to her road. There's this wood line, so you can't really see the house. But you kind of see like a glow coming from it. Turned around, we actually went down the driveway, which is fire coming from the backyard. There's this big fire in the backyard, like this fire's huge. And I look over and I see Kyle standing by the fire. I, I, I can see Kyle. I can't really tell it's him, but just 
my body shape, you know, I can tell that's him. <clears throat> we pull in, I get out, I come around the side window, and I done like smoked my whole pack of cigarettes, and I asked him for a couple cigarettes, and my dad, and I asked for a couple cigarettes before I left. He said, yeah. I heard the door open behind me, and she was pulling out, I looked over, and there's Soto standing at the, um, uh, at the door. I walk in, I don't even, I don't even think I talk to him. I just, I'm so, I don't know how to put it. I'm just, I feel like such crap. I'm, I just want to go to sleep, you know. I blow past him. I walk in the living room. Well, before I walk in the living room, I notice I see Charlie. She's sitting there scrubbing the floor. She got this bottle of bleach with her. Like, she just, I don't know if she was using a rag or a scrub brush, but she's scrubbing the floor. Turn, go past her. You know, and there's Amber. Amber's sitting where I'm uh, on the couch left in the living room. She's sitting there and she's got my bottle of liquor. And she's just, she, she's sitting there drinking. You know, she's got tear streaks going down her face like she's been crying her eyes out. And I don't, at the time, I, you know, I didn't realize what was going on. I just kind of looked at her, you know, like, you know, what are you crying? You know, I'm the one that got beat up. You know, what are you, what are you crying about? But I went off into my room. I went off into my room and I went, you know, Started taking stuff out of my pockets. And I'm about to go to sleep, like, right now. Soda comes to my room. Soda comes to my room. Tells me, Kyle's got to talk to me. You know? Says, Mike, you want your gun back? You know, at this point, you know, yeah, where is it? You know, look, you got to talk to Kyle first. You know? We gave it back to Kyle? He's like, no, no. I got it. Just... You need to go talk to Kyle first. You gotta talk to Kyle. So I said, okay. I asked him where he was, and Kyle was outside still. We went out front, or we went out through the living room, went out the back, and literally, it was Soto in front of me. I was in the middle. There was, I don't remember what order Amber and Charlie were in, but they were behind me. And I walk, we walk outside. And I look over, and Kyle's on the other side of this fire pit. You know, this, this fire is, it's, it's just, you know, the fire pit's only about maybe four or five foot across. This fire is just, just huge. When we get walking over there, and I literally can't get within, like, 15 feet of this fire. This fire is so hot, I can't get within, like, 15 feet of this damn thing. So we're walking around it, and I notice Kyle has walked off over to the, um, uh, Kyle's actually over by the fence with the neighbors. I'm, uh... Charlie blows past me, she goes over there, I go over there, and we're, you know, the guy's concerned about the fire. You know, the guy's concerned because of his property, and he's worried about the fire, and doesn't want to burn down his house. When his wife ended up coming out, and I'm sitting out there, and, and I talk to her, you know. I say, you know, it's not a problem, I don't, you know, you're right, the fire shouldn't be this big, I don't know what they're doing, you know, it just, they need to, you know, if it doesn't, I remember I told them, if it doesn't go down like the next five minutes, I'll take a hose to it myself, you know. They said, okay, all right. And they left. You know, they, they went back. And as we walked back, I asked Kyle, I said, you, you need to talk to me? And he said, yeah, I need to talk to you. I said, well, look, you know, because we just got into a fight. You know, we, we, I'm, I'm pretty quick to cool off about things. We just got into a fight. Neighbors are already out in the backyard. You know, if you want to talk, we'll go inside and talk because I don't want something to happen right here in front of the neighbors and cops call for domestic violence. We go back inside, and I'm a... Uh, Remember, we were going back in. Soto said he was going to stay out there, you know, make sure, you know, fire didn't catch on anything else. We go back inside, and we go into my room. And I remember Kyle told the girls to stay out in the living room. And they, they, they sat back out on the couch, I think. Went in my room. I sat down, and I asked, you know, what do you got to tell me? And what is it? And he gives me this whole spiel of... I know, I know, I know. I can't say what he said. Well, hmm. huh. I don't. Give me a minute. I'm trying to. I'm trying. To, uh, well, I can't. I can't tell you what he said. I wish I could. You can say what you did in regards to what he told you. Well, when he told me what he told me, I was I was just 
I, I was dumbfounded by what he said. I I couldn't believe what he just told me. And then, you know, I kind of he kind of put everything together, you know. I come inside, Charlie's cleaning with bleach, you know, Amber's sitting there crying her eyes out. There's a freaking fire 20 foot tall in the backyard, you know. Kyle's sitting here crying his eyes out, talking about he doesn't know what to do, and he doesn't know, you know, it's, I've, you know, kind of put it together, you know, it's, it's pretty, you know, I, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to say, you know, I, I, I freaked out, you know, and I remember because I said, I'm a, you asked me what, what, what would I do, what should I do, what would I do, and I told him, I don't remember what I said, I said something about somebody's going to call the cops, or he's got to call the cops. I never said I was going to call the cops because I don't, I don't under no circumstances call the cops. I don't care what it's for. I don't care if I see a robbery across the street. I'm liable to get arrested just because the cops don't like me. But I, I don't remember what I said. Somebody's going to call the cops or he's got to call the cops. But when I told him that, he freaked. He, he, he freaked because he, he thought I was going to call the cops on him. And, you know, got to threatening me. Talking about if I call the cops, he's going to say I did it. You know, what are you talking about? You know, I'm not going to jail for you. I'm not going to jail. I'm not doing that. I'm not going down. You know, what are you talking about? You know, he's, you know, and he's talking about, you know, it's either, you know, either, either you're going to help us or you're against us. You know, either, either you're going to help us or you're, or you're not, you know. You know, you're already in on it. You're already here. You know, it, it, it's too late to back out. And I just... I just, it, it took me like literally like 20 minutes to calm him down. And it wasn't until that point that I was really, I, I was actually scared for my life. Just, here I am all beat up, I'm drunk, I'm high, you know, I'm, I'm all kinds of messed up right now. I, you know, I couldn't fight off a flea right now. And here he is, you know, 240 pounds standing up, puffing his chest out, swinging his arms around, you know, talking about, you know, that he's not going to jail for me, you know. I'm, I'm liable to be the next one in the fire pit, you know? And I'm scared like hell. I'm not going to lie, I was. And I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm, I'm... And I tried telling him, you know? I tried telling him, you know, I'm not going to call the cops on you, man. You know, I care about the kid. I do. I still do. And I tried telling him, you know, I'm not going to do that to you. And he told me, you are either with us or you're against us. And I told him, I said, man, look, you're, you're, you're high. You know, you're, you're tweaked out of your mind. I'm not in the right state of mind. You're not in the right state of mind. You just need to slow down. You need to stop. You know, don't, don't do nothing else. I said, man, look, before you do anything else, you need to sober up. We all need to sober up. And I told him that. And he agreed with me for once. You know, you, you know, you're right. I said, look, man, go do, you know, do, do, do whatever you're going to do, you know. I said, but, man, I'm, I, need, I, need to, I need to get sober, man. I, I, can't, I can't do anything. I can't help you. I can't, I can't help this situation, period, like this. I told him, I said, look, more sober up. We'll figure all this out. We'll, 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 we'll figure out. We'll figure this all out. <clears throat> he says, "All right." I said, "Well, look, go tell Soda to come in here." You know. He leaves. Soda comes in. Well, as soon as Soda comes in, so do the girls, <laughs> and the girls are right out there listening this whole time. They're sitting right there in this this couch, probably for me to that chair right there, and and they're they're. They heard everything that he said to me. You heard Kyle going off on me, and, and, and they come back in, and I, I ask him, you know, what the hell? You know, what happened? And she's sitting here crying, you know. Amber's sitting here crying, talking about she didn't mean for that to happen. Objection hearsay. Sustained. <sighs> she's sitting here crying. I felt bad for her. I'm not gonna lie, I felt bad for her. I really, I really did. I felt, I felt terrible. You know, she's sitting there crying her eyes out. And, and I feel helpless. I don't know what to do. You know? I ended up asking Soto, 
I ended up getting told that the gun was underneath the house. That when Kyle was reloading it, he set it down, and that, that he grabbed it and he threw it underneath the house before Kyle came back into the house. He said he didn't know what was going on. He said he didn't know why he was reloading the gun. But when he seen it, he, he, he just, when he wasn't around it, he took it and he threw it underneath the house. Because he, you know, Kyle's, you know, the hole in the bottom of the floor is only about that big. And there's, there's no way Kyle's getting down in there. There's no way anybody other than like me or the girls would be able to get down in there. So he threw it on the house. And I told him, oh, just, you know, don't touch it. Don't tell him where it is either. Don't touch it. Leave it there. Soto, I told Soto to go keep an eye on Kyle because I don't, I don't know. I, I really. I'm I'm actually kind of worried because Kyle's Kyle thinks I'm I'm about to turn on him. Like he he, he expressed that to me. He thinks I'm about to turn on him, and and I want I told Soto to go keep an eye on him, you know, because that's that's his little road dog buddy, you know. Go, you go keep an eye on him. I don't, you know. Soto left. Told you know, finally calmed the girls down, which took forever. They're crying their eyes out. You know, they 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 were crying pretty hard, and it, it was, you know, it was pretty bad. You know, they're crying, and I'm I'm I don't. They told Charlie to get some sleep. She says she needed to get some sleep. They all get some sleep. Amber's still crying, asking if she can stay in my room with me that night. But she didn't, she, you know, she just wanted to. I, I, I didn't have the heart to tell her no, you know. She ended up being in there. We went to sleep, like, literally, I don't, my head hit that pillow and I was out. I was so exhausted. Just, I was out. The next morning, I woke up. I remember I woke up, the sun was already up. I woke up, it was, it had to have been, it had to have been about 10.30, it had to have been. I woke up and I know Amber wasn't in there. She wasn't, she wasn't still in bed. I woke up and I hear her talk about the living room. I go out in the living room, I go out in the living room, everybody's out there, Amber, Kyle, Soto, Charlie, Kyle's already dressed for work and everything. He's about to go, he's about to go to work, and I don't know how I'm supposed to say this. They say they got it all figured out already. That they that they. Objection know. hearsay. Sustained. with Amber. I go with Amber and Kyle to take them to work. I wanted to get out of the house. Amber was going to go with Kyle take them to work. I was going to go with them. You know, I, I just wanted to get out of the house at that point. You know, I just I wanted to get out of the house. I, I go with them. Usually we take the back and we'll, we'll hop the back fence and we'll, like literally we'll end up in their backyard. <coughs> because of my knee we had to actually take the long way around. We took a long way around and we're walking. And I get told, you know, Tracy asked about my face, which is Amber and Kyle's mama. She asked, he said, just say that an aerosol can blew up my face. Just, I looks not like a burn. You know, I got a broken nose and two black eyes and a busted lip. But, you know, all right. We get there. At this point, I'm, I'm literally, I, I still remember we smoked a joint on the way there because I, I was hung over like hell. We get there. We were there maybe like four or five minutes. We got in the hurricane floor. Me and I, I think me and Amber were in the back seat. Kyle was in the front seat with his mom. I slept literally the whole way there. I got, I got, in, the, I got in the Explorer and I literally, I was asleep the whole way. We got back. We got out. 
and we work um uh me and Amber went inside. She went to go make something to eat, but she couldn't eat. You know, she's trying to hold it together. She 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 was she was on the verge of tears that whole day. And and we didn't go back to Charlie's. Um uh, cause she she started she started cracking up around her mom. She started you know. So she wanted to go back to Charlie's. We went the long way around, you know, back around the block instead of hopping the back fence. Well, as we're coming around, so we're out there with the pressure washer on the front, on the front, um, is it patio, uh, it's a slab of concrete. He's out there pressure washing off the steps and everything. And you know, I, I see him. We go inside. I remember around that time was when I called him a. Uh, and we back, went back inside and they said James was, that uh, Amber said that she texted James that he was on his way over. That he, that he was on, that he was going to be over there soon. Um, let's see this. Um, around that time, before that, or well, around that time, I went outside and I called Kristen, Kristen Williams, which was a girl I was seeing. And me and her, me and her, um, uh, we dated on and off for about, I don't know, a year and a half maybe, not even. And uh, we used to go down to her, her dad's house, and we'd hang out down there in Stark. Well, I wanted to get out for the house for a little bit. I just, I, I don't, I don't want to be here no more. You know, after what I was told, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be in this house no more. I just, I don't. I don't even want to be around these people right now. I call her and ask her if it's okay if I go, you know, if I go down to her dad's house. She said, yeah, that's fine. You know, yeah, you can go down there. Let me, let me call her first and make sure it's okay. I said, all right, that's cool. All right, I'll, I'll wait for her to call me back. I got on the phone, went inside. We all just pretty much just, it, it, just, just hung out for a little bit, just, just, just sat there. And, uh. James Havens, the stepdad, he pulls up in this red truck. He comes inside asking, you know, what's up? And I, I look at him, you know, I look at Amber, you know, because you know, Amber's about to ask him to do something. And I, I tell her, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't want no part of getting James into this, you know. He's a nice guy. He's, he's, he's slow. You know he's slow, but he he's a good-hearted person, and, and I, I I still I still believe that even after all the lies, I still believe that he's I still believe he's a good person at heart. He he's, he cares about his kids, you know. I go to walk out though. I I, I walk out. You know, I think I walked out. And I called Kristen back. I think while she was talking to him, and I talked to her for for a few minutes. When I came back in. When I came back in, she was on my James sitting there with like this this dumbfounded look on his face, you know, just well, when you guys gonna leave, you know? And I am I I don't know, you know. And he said I'm a, he said well he's waiting for Kyle he's waiting for Kyle to um uh he's waiting for Kyle to call him because Kyle owes him gas money. And when Kyle calls him, give him gas money because Kyle owes me money too. We're gonna go pick up the gas money, fill the truck up. And I'll just show him where the rock quarry is. Well, I don't know what time we got the phone call, because Kyle had to be at work, I think, at 11. Maybe around 12, 1 o'clock, we got a phone call from Kyle. Get the phone call. We hop in the truck. Well, before we hop in the truck, we go out. The truck's by the dumpster. So we had James back the truck up to the dumpster. So it got into the dumpster and started handing out buckets to James. Started handing out these gray buckets with lids on them, five-gallon buckets to James Havens. And he takes them and he sets them in the back of the truck. Now, so ask, ask, well, are they, are they, are they, are they, are they, are they, are Grab a couple cinder blocks, and there's this red dog leash. Put that in the back of the truck. 
All I'm supposed to do is show these people where this Lion Rock Pit is at. That's all I'm supposed to do. <clears throat> we get in the truck, we drive. I think my, you know, I'm pretty sure we stopped by my house so I can grab a clean shirt. Hop back in the truck and we drove out. Drove out to pick up the money from Kyle. From he was actually at Walmart, right behind the McDonald's cash his check. Got the money from James. Got him, uh, gave me the money he owed me, which wasn't much. Got across the street to the racetrack, filled up the truck. He had me get him a carton of Newport 100s, which I did. Um, I gave a pack to Soto. I gave, he ended up driving back over. I gave a pack to, to Kyle. Because he was only 16, 17 at the time. He couldn't buy them. And we leave. Now, I'm terrible at directions. I don't, I don't know directions. I told me to Gander Mountain. I can show you how to get there from there. Go to Gander Mountain. Cut straight, go straight across, I think it was the 40th. <coughs> Cut straight across, go through, take a right, take a left, and go all the way down. You're going to hit this big sign that says SCI, Construction Company. But when we hit this sign, tell them, turn down this road. You know, turn down, it's, 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 a, it's a dirt road. It's got trash on both sides. You know, it's just, we go through there. Now, we go through there and we pull in, we get to the very end of it, and it, it's, it's a decent drive. We pull in, we turn around, and we back up. You know, we back up to this, this, this kind of like little mound. You got to walk over that mound to get to the, the sugar sand road that takes you all the way down to the end of the Lime Rock Pit. We get down there, turn them up. We get out and start loading things, and we find out, you know, that <laughs> turns out, you know, there's, there's a mound. There's five things to carry, and there's, you know, I, was, I didn't want to carry anything. I didn't, wasn't planning on carrying anything because of my knee. There's five things to carry, and there's only, you know, there's, there's three people. I ended up carrying one of the cinder blocks. James had a bucket and a cinder block. Soto had two buckets. I had a cinder block and, a, and that red dog leash chain thing. Before we left, though, Soto reaches into the bed of the truck and he pulls out this burnt can. Just just this burnt soup can looking thing and he takes it and to the left of the truck he just slings the contents of it and then throws the can to the right. Well, when he slung the you know when he slung it, I just seen just I don't know what it was, it just went flying. I asked him, you know, what the hell was that? He told me that this objection hearsay. Sustained. Well, we went over the mound. We went over the mound of dirt. We went over the mound of dirt. Showed him how to get the road. We, I had to stop like four or five times because of my knee. I'm wearing them. Uh, remember, I was wearing wearing Jordan slides. These, these they're white Jordan slides. We're walking, walking down the sugar sand road. We come up to this rock quarry. Now, this rock quarry, if you're going to go down to the face of the rock quarry, you actually got to walk down this this path. And it, it's pretty steep. And, it, you know, and even if you get into the front of it, it goes out about four or five, you know, it, it goes out about 20 feet before it gets past four or five feet deep. But the back of it, where the cliff face is, there's... It hits about 20 feet. I've actually swam down and touched the bottom. It, it's, it's, it's fairly deep. Well, none of us are playing on getting wet. You know, I, and I told him, you know, it's kind of an afterthought, really. Don't let roll. You got to, you know, throw the, the cliff face. Well, I didn't realize there was a fence back there. We get over to the fence, and there's vines and thorns. This fence had to be five or, or almost six foot tall fence. It's a chain link fence. There's vines all over it. I'm here sitting here wearing, you know, the open toed slides, you know, and my knees all messed up. I told him, you know, I I can't I can't climb over with you. I mean, I told him, you know, if you climb over though and you go back probably about thirty feet, 
you'll hit the rock face and that's where it is James climbed over Soto and I think it was no it was Soto that climbed over first and James started handing stuff over to him Soto or I'm like then James climbed over they went out there and I'm a I had the center blocks they were carrying they were I was sitting at the fence waiting with the center blocks on the other side of the fence because I couldn't climb it. And they go over there, and just Soto comes back, you know. And we hear, and I, you know, when Soto gets back to the fence, I go to hand him the center blocks, and we hear a splash. You know, we hear a splash coming over, and we thought James fell in, you know. We, I hand Soto the rest of this, I hand Soto the center blocks and the, 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 the dog leash thing, and he goes back. He's gone maybe five minutes, you know, and I hear another big splash. Uh, James and Co or James and Soto come back. You know, it turned out James didn't fall in. They come back, they hop over the fence, and we get to walk back. We get to walk back, and uh, we go back, we go over the mound of dirt, we get in the truck, and, and we leave. We leave. I think we on the way back we stopped off at Publix, got got some beer I think. Stopped off at Publix, came back to Charlie's house. Got back to Charlie's house. We weren't there for but maybe me and James weren't there for. I remember because I started drinking. I just I was, I don't know. I just I, I needed to drink bad after that. I started drinking. James says he's got to go pick up Kyle. I asked him, you know, can I just come with you? I don't, I don't really don't want to be in this house. Any reason to get out of this house, I'm, I'm taking it. Well, we get to, we get to go get, get in Kyle, and you know, we pull up to Kyle's work. Right before we pull up to Kyle's work, James gets a phone call from Tracy Wright, and I'm sitting here, and Tracy Wright is yelling so loud through his phone. I can, you know, I can hear what she's yelling about. She's freaking out. Cops are in the neighborhood. Yeah, hearsay. Sustained. Uh, I'm going to overrule that objection based on perhaps an excited utterance. You can say what Tracy Wright said. She's saying, to sum it up, she's saying the cops are there, and they're looking for everybody. Cops are there, and they're looking for just everybody. You know, James tells her, you know, she asks James, you know, where, where have you been? What's going on? You know, we've seen the kids today. And, and James says, no, I've been out fishing all day. I've been out fishing. Where, where, I don't know where he said he went fishing, but he said he was out fishing all day. You pick up Kyle. As soon as Kyle gets in, I tell him, I say, Kyle, man, the freaking cops are looking for everybody. You know, snaps on me. Why'd you tell him? Why'd you tell him? I told him, you know, I, I didn't say anything. I said, Mike, I swear to God, you better not have told him. I, I told him, you know, I didn't say anything. You know? He said, look, man, but I just need to just chill and not say anything. He's telling me, don't don't say anything. I, when I tell him, I said, look, man, if, it, if, it's, if it's that problem, you're worried about me saying something, let me get some gas money, and I'll shoot out to Stark, you know? If it's that big of a problem where you think I'm a teller on you for what you did, I'm, I'm just let me go to start. Just give me some gas money and I'll leave, you know. And I'll let you guys handle, you know, the help that went on. He ended up giving me like, I don't, I don't know. He gave me like between like seventy five and a hundred bucks for gas. We ended up dropping him off at the Quick King. Um, uh, me and James pulled up to the Quick King, dropped him off at the Quick King. This had to have been about. 4:30, maybe a little bit later, not even. And we start driving up. We start driving down to Stark. You know, I'm just going there with what I got in my pockets and on my back. I'm just, you know, I need to get out of here. I called Kristen, you know, and I told her I was gonna stop by. You know, I said, hey, look, I'm gonna stop by her house. You know, before I go down there. She said it was all right that I go down there. So I'm gonna stop by before I go down there. We pull in. And you know, we pull in and, and I get out the truck and I close the door. James stays in the driver's seat and I walk to the back of the truck. Just Kristen comes out the house and she comes over by me and we're sitting there talking and she you know she asked what happened to my face and I told her, you know, it was, you know, kind of fight, you know. 
And then she asked, like, Mike, what, what's really going on? You know, what, what what's really going on? Because I, she said I wasn't, she told me I wasn't acting normal. I told her, and this is what I told her, too. I told her, I said, look, there was a fight that went bad, and somebody got shot with my gun. I said, look, I need to just, I, I, I you know, I need to get out of here for a little bit. I said, you know, and she, you know, and I told her, I, I didn't tell her no details. I didn't give her no details, but I told her, you know, I told her that, some, that a body got burned and it got dumped. But that's all I told her. And she said, all right, you know, go go to start. You know, go go down there and, and just go down there. I got back in the truck. Me and James drove down there. We ended up, we ended up getting lost. We got lost pretty bad. Ended up, <laughs> ended up going by Lake Butler Prison. That was a bad woman. But... We ended up down there. We ended up down and we got lost. We ended up at, I want to say, a hardware store where I ended up calling Big Jim, uh, James Williams Sr., sent his, his son to come pick me up. Actually, he sent, he sent his son and his son's cousin to come pick me up, Greg. They both came and picked me up. We drove back down there. We got to the house, you know, I get along with them pretty, you know, all right. We're sitting there and we're hanging out. The first night, I remember Jim went to work. It was me, Crystal Anderson, Jimmy Jr., and Greg. You know, we're sitting there, you know, everybody's sitting there. Everybody's drinking, you know, everybody's smoking pot, you know. Sitting there and, uh. We're just hanging out and just, you know, just, just. I'm trying to unwind from all this and and I don't. Know, but next day comes around. We went to went to Walmart. Helped him get a phone. Help Big Jim get a phone. Uh, we came back. We went fishing. You know. Came back again, and this had to have been around. I say. It, it it was in the evening. It was later towards the evening. Well, I had kept my phone off this whole time. Just I had kept it off. I go to call my dad, and when I call my dad, he answers, and it just, you know, just all hell is broken loose, you know. Saying I'm gonna, you know, saying the SWAT team kicked the door in, you know. Bert told me the SWAT team kicked the door and that they're looking for me for. For murder, saying I shot somebody, and I remember I told him I said, Dad, I never, you know, I didn't shoot nobody. And I told him that too on the phone. I said, Dad, I didn't shoot nobody. And he said, Well, Mike, if you didn't, you need to turn yourself in. And he told me that the cops said that they know that he brought me cigarettes, and and that if they find out he had anything else to do with it, that they're gonna give him charge of murder too. And and I told him I said, Well, you know, because he said all he told him was that he just brought me some cigarettes. And I said, Well, look. That's all I told him. Just leave it at that. You know, when I turn myself in, just just keep it like that. You know, don't don't you know, just leave it at that. You know, I'm I'm scared to death. My dad's gonna get arrested. You know, my dad's got health problems. You know, he can't he can't handle something like that. And I'm I'm scared to have him anywhere near this. And they're threatening to throw him in the middle of it. We still you know you need to turn yourself in. I said you know what, you're right. I need to hang up with them. And I remember I was so mad when I hung up because I, I knew I knew what the score was. I knew what the score was. They, you know, SWAT teams kicked the door in. They're looking for me saying I shot somebody. I remember I was so pissed. I took the phone and I slammed it down. There was, was a fireplace with some cinder blocks around it. And I just took the phone. I was just so mad. I just I remember I threw it. The phone broke. I remember I grabbed it. I just threw it in the fire pit. I was so pissed. And I think it was, I think it was Crystal. Danielle, she was sitting out there, um, Josh Paget, and Jimmy Jr., um, Sr. was asleep. He, he had to get up work soon. And they asked me, said, Mike, what's going on? I told him, I said, you know, I told him, I said, there's people up in Summerfield saying, you know, there's they're saying stuff about me, you know, saying stuff I didn't do. And they're saying, well, well what happened? And I, and I, I tell them what happened. I told him, you know, I told him, look, you know, and this is what I was told too, that, some, that somehow 
This dude right there got into a fight with someone else. The fight went bad. Dude, he was getting his ass kicked. Not not the victim, the one that got killed, but the other kid was getting his ass kicked. And he pulled out a gun and shot him. And he said, you know, I told him, you know, he said he ran outside, he shot him outside, so he brought him back in, put him in the tub, shot him again, you know, put him in a sleeping bag, threw him in the fire. And I told him, you know, next day, put him, you know, they put him in buckets. I remember I told him, I said, they put him in buckets. And I told him, I showed him where the Lime Rock Pit was. And they asked me, they said, well, Mike, what are they saying you did, though? I said, Mike, I, I told him. I said, they're saying that I shot him. You know, I told him. I said, they're saying I shot him. And he said, oh, Mike, you got you to gotta tell Big Jim. You got to go tell Big Jim. I said, you know, you're right, because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do. None of us know what to do. We go out. I'm, uh, we go back inside the house. Big Jim getting up. He comes out in the living room. I, I tell him, you know, I tell him the same thing. I tell him, you know, there's... there's the stuff going on up in Stark, and you know, they're saying I shot somebody. And he's like, Mike, you know, and I told him too, because I told, told everybody, because everybody was pretty much sitting around. And he asked me, he said, Well, why did he get killed? I told him, I said, Because he asked me why he got killed. I said, The brother killed him because he was beaten on and apparently raped his sister, you know? He killed him because he was raped and beaten on and his sister. You know, and I told him that, and he's like, "Well, Mike, if that's if that's if that's what happened, you need you need to turn yourself in." And I told him, I said, "You know, you're, you're you're right. I need to. You know, I got I got to clear this up. You know, I got people up in Summerfield saying I shot somebody when I didn't, and he's just he's just you know you gotta tell you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta turn yourself in. You gotta you just gotta turn yourself in. He said he can't have this in his house like this. I said, "All right." I went out, I'm literally, I'm sitting out there, and I'm, I was going to be drunk before I turned myself in, because I knew this was going to be a very long night. Started drinking, and I'm not out there maybe five, ten minutes, you know, here come the cops pulling up, and there was so many of them, like, they had at least 20 cars pulling up, and trucks, and SUVs, and they grabbed me, they grabbed me. Slammed me on the ground, grabbed me, took me out to the truck, and I got this thick silver necklace on, which they took from me, that he was choking me with. They took me out there, and they put me in this, the back of the squad car. And I'm sitting in the back, and the guy in the driver's front seat, I think it was like a couple of them, they're sitting there telling me, oh, yeah, we got you now, we got you, oh, yeah. Yeah, we know what you did, yeah, they, everybody told us what you did, ah. Uh, I'm still like, what are you talking about? No, 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 save it, we already know what happened, we already know what happened. Um, and at that point, you know, because I, I've been through this with the police force, it doesn't matter what you say. If somebody's already said something about you, it, it doesn't matter. You know, the best thing you can do at that point is just be quiet, ask for your lawyer, sort it out then. Because no matter what you say, it does not matter. They are going to twist it and turn it, and they're going to put it against you. Away, you know, got in the interview room with Detective Bowie. Told him, you know, told him I wouldn't talk to my lawyer because I got these, I got, I got the cops harassing me nonstop. I'm, oh yeah, you're going down, you're going to prison, and you know, said a few other things I'm not gonna repeat. I asked my lawyer. We get, in, you know, they asked me if I want to come back to, to Marion County. I said, yeah, sure. You know, get back to Marion County. We get in the vehicle, shoot back over to Marion County. We must have been like. Suburban or something, a guy on my right, a guy on my left, two in the driver's seat, everybody's got guns out, you know, the wazoo. We pull up, they take me in the interview room, they strip butt naked, you know, they said they're making fun of me and taking pictures and posing with me and stuff, and it it got it got bad, like it was a freaking circus. These people thought it was a freaking joke. Take me out, they put me out in the there's this big office area. That's when cell phones came out. Everybody's taking pictures and oh yeah, we got them, yeah. So we pulled up to the we they finally brought me from the substation to the actual jail. I wasn't in a good mood. They brought me in. 
task force people came in, they got ski mask on. They sat on his bench. They sat on the bench with this guy that I later find out his name is William Bockler. Never holding cell with him. Was on a bench in booking. Never in a holding cell with this guy. That I, I couldn't even remember his face until I until I seen him get up here. Anyways, I'm sitting there and there's this task force guy with an officer sitting like standing right in front of me. They're both looking at me. I'm I'm drunk and I'm angry and I'm pissed and I'm all messed up. And he's like, what happened to his face? Oh, threw a can in the fire and it blew up and that's what happened to his face. And we are sitting here joking about this right in front of me, you know, talking about talking about it like I'm not even right here. You know, just talk about me. Yeah, yeah, we got him. He's, you know, yeah, everyone told us what he did, and this is what he did. They, they got, they got the details, <laughs> totally messed up. But they sat there and said it anyways. What I ended up doing is I laid on that bench and I went to sleep. I, I, I was fed up. I made a phone call to my dad. Told him, I told him to get Holloman up here to come talk to me, and I went to sleep. And that was it. Yeah. That's about it. Here I am.